Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. This video is about Cisco Software Defined WAN on iOS XE routers. In this video, you will learn how to upgrade an existing ISR 4K into an SD-WAN image. For demonstration purposes, we've used an existing 4331 from our labs, but that said, you can use the similar steps to upgrade to SD-WAN image on any other supported uh, platforms. My name is Hamza Kardame. I'm a part of the technical marketing team at Cisco for SD-WAN. And with me, I have uh, Nikolai Pitayev. Thanks, Hamza. Um, I'm in the same group as Hamza, technical marketing engineer, working on SD-WAN. And let's have a look at the agenda, what we will cover today. We will start with basic questions. What do I need? Well, OK, I have ISR 4K in my lab, and I want to upgrade it to iOS XE image which supports SD-WAN. And we will talk about, is it the same? image which I had before was additional features added. Is it something else? So that's one important question up front. Then we will cover questions like pre-provisioning. Well, what do I need to configure on that box? Um, can I convert existing configuration which I had before to SD-WAN configuration? Very important step is software image upload and reboot. That's what we need for a software upgrade and last but not least verification how can i make sure that my upgrade went fine and my isr 4k or other supported platform joined sdwn fabric successfully all right so let's do the following role game for this video i will be a happy cisco customer having isr 4k in my lab and my main task is to upgrade the existing ISR 4331, what I have in my lab, to SD-WAN image. And you'll be Cisco Systems Engineer supporting me, explaining my questions, guiding me through the whole process. Is it okay for you? Not so sure about the Systems Engineer bit, but yeah, I'd be happy to guide you through this. Excellent. Thank you. So let's start with basic generic questions about supported router models. Uh, memory in my lab, I have ISR 4K running 8 gig RAM and I have a couple of interface modules inside. Is it okay? I do have a ROM monitor version which is one year old. So tell me about the basic prerequisites. So I guess the first thing to kind of understand about this release of uh, the SD-WAN image is that in this first release, what we've done is we've taken all the features and capabilities of Cisco SD-WAN and added them into supported ISR and ASR platforms at Cisco. And what we've added additionally are relevant features to SD-WAN from iOS XE and bake them into this code. Now for a full picture of what uh, you know particular platforms and modules we support, uh, you can head over to sdvan-docs.cisco.com and go under the product documentation section. Uh, you should see a guide that walks you through software installation and upgrade for iOS XE routers. You will also find a comprehensive list of all the ASR and ISR product families that we support on this first release, as well as a list of all the supported interface modules for those particular platforms. Okay, second question for me is, uh... I do understand serial number, which I can easily locate, but you do also have chassis number and smart account number, which is needed for plug and play and zero touch provisioning. So could you please uh, just explain me the main difference between serial number, SUDI and chassis number, and what do I need particular for SD-WAN upgrade? Sure. So for the purposes of plug and play or zero touch provisioning, what we do is we use information from your router to help with the authentication process. So the main pieces of information we take are the chassis serial number of your device. And for SUDI, SUDI is nothing but your secure, unique device identification certificate. It's a built-in certificate that Cisco provides on your ISRs and ESRs. So the idea is with both pieces of this information bound to your smart account, your plug and play or zero touch provision process should be seamless. We can quickly head over to a uh, router and see how we can get that information. So here, 
what we're looking at is an ISR 4331 and I have simply issued a command called show crypto PKI certificates followed by a trust point name. This trust point contains the SUDI certificate or the built-in certificate on the device and what you'll notice over here in this output is I am looking at the identity certificate of SUDI, uh, not the CA certificate and for this particular identity certificate what we need is the serial number. So this information is something that you will need, the certificate serial number of SUDI uh, as part of your initial provisioning process. The other piece of information can be retrieved by another show command. So if you issue show license UDI, uh, you will see a serial number right next to the platform name. Uh, that is the chassis serial number for this device. So with these two pieces of information, uh, we simply tie this to your smart account and with that, we will be able to perform zero trash provisioning or plug and play. And last, but really important question is where can I download the software which I need for uh, SD WAN? So, all software as usual on Cisco is posted on uh, CCO or Cisco.com. Uh, locate your platform. For example, in this case, we're looking at a 4331. And right under that, you should see iOS XE SD WAN software. And you should see the first release 1691. Uh, that would be the image that you would be downloading. Last question on that topic is about ROM 1 version. Which version do you recommend for SD WAN? Well, uh, we recommend that you use the latest version of ROM1 for your particular platform. Uh, what you can do is simply head over to sdwan-talks.cisco.com where you will get a list of the minimum supported ROM1 versions for each platform. Okay, so let me just double check. I have ISR4K in my lab and the minimum version is 16.7. Let me just quickly double check what I do have in my lab uh, by using show platform CLI mm -hmm. and looking at the output which I highlighted right now. It looks like I need an upgrade because I'm running 16.4 and you recommended 16.7. So how can I do the upgrade? The upgrade is a pretty simple process as well. There's a command called upgrade rom-monitor and you simply point it to a file name that will be sitting on your boot flash. I see. So basically what I, all what I need to do is go to the download uh, page and then locate the Romon software for my platform, click on it, download and install it from boot flash or hard disk. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty simple. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So we talked about requirements for the router itself. Now let's talk about additional requirements for the infrastructure. What I need in my lab in order to upgrade the router to SD-WAN. What about SD-WAN controllers? Uh, do I need internet connection? What else do I need for the successful upgrade? Sure. So with any SD-WAN deployment, the first step is to always bring your controllers up. So what I mean by that is your vManage, vBond, and vSmart controllers should already have been deployed and should be configured and ready to go. Uh, typically what we do is for customers at Cisco, we have a cloud operations team who will automatically take care of spinning up these controllers in Cisco's cloud for you. Uh, that said, because the controllers are setting in the Cisco cloud, we advise that you have an internet connection available on your router so that your router can communicate with these controllers. Uh, the next piece is for the purposes of plug and play, uh, we recommend that you also have DHCP on your router on the WAN interface. At least one WAN interface on your device should be able to get an IP address via DHCP. And finally, the last part is once you have those pieces taken care of, you just have to make sure that you have the SD-WAN image available on your router. And typically what you can do is use TFTP or FTP to simply pull that image from any location in your network onto the boot flash of your device. All right, so we're all clear on basic requirements for the router, for the infrastructure. And now what I want to do is to show you how to provision ISR 4K in the PNP portal for SD WAN. So typically uh, the controller profiles are where your VBON controllers are, information pertaining to your VBON controllers is going to reside. 
if you've decided to go with a Cisco hosted controller model, uh, this information will already be pre-populated under your smart account under controller profiles. So now what you will be doing next is adding your actual device that we're going to be doing the upgrade on onto the portal. So let's see how we go about doing that. Right. So back to devices tab and then I will add one device manually. Mm -hmm. I can also import CV CSV file, but in this case, it will be just one device. And I know already serial number. So this is what I got from uh, CLI output. And now I need the product ID, which is this field. And very important step is to map this device to the controller profile. Right. And that's what we just saw. And then it's just a question of clicking save and next and done for the device configuration. So that's all what I need. Actually four steps, which you see here, in order to set up a new device in the PNP portal. And right now it's ready and waiting for redirection. Step number two is about converting existing router configuration, which I had on my ISR 4K to SD-WAN. I mean, it's clear if I have just a basic vanilla configuration, there's not much to convert. I can just write erase it and then configure the whole um, system from the scratch later on. But what if I have existing configuration and I would like to migrate, convert it to SD-WAN config? Well, uh, Nikolai, to make that process easy, uh, we at Cisco have built a tool that will help you migrate your existing iOS XE configuration into supported uh, config templates that the that can be consumed by the vManage. So uh, let's take a quick look at what this tool looks like today. So what you'll be greeted with initially is uh, the option to upload your existing iOS XE configuration file into the tool. So simply click on the file name and click on upload after that and next. Now while this tool is taking the config, what you'll see is that uh, the upload has been successful and now we can move on to the next step. Now here what, you, what the tool will do is essentially run through the entire config line by line and look at elements that can be migrated or converted into the SD-WAN solution. And at the same time, it will also highlight and let you know what aspects of your configuration will not be supported in the SD-WAN solution itself. Uh, once that is done, you will have the option to modify the configuration so that you can remove any unsupported elements. Um, and from there, finally, you'll get the option to convert it one last time into templates and then export it. So now looking at the screen over here, it looks like the tool has caught at least one or two violations so far. Uh, looking at this, uh, it, it has cited that you have some problem config in policy maps and in AAA. Now under policy maps, all right, so what we see over here is we have a nested service policy. Um, nested service policies or hierarchical you know, quality of service is not supported on SD-WAN today. So what you can quickly do is fix this configuration for now by simply removing this part of it. Also, I noticed that we had another misconfig under AAA. Uh, yeah, this, there isn't an equivalent, uh, you know, config for that particular command on SD-WAN. So you can go ahead and remove that and run it again. Now, as I'd stated earlier, the tool will do the same checks again. If there are still any outstanding issues, it'll throw it out. If not, it'll move on to the next step of, you know, modifying the config. There you can add other parameters about, uh, for example, your site ID, uh, you know, your host name, things like that. And then you'll get the option to export it following that. Uh, also from the export, you have two options. You have the option to either directly push the templates from the tool into your vManage by providing those uh, the vManage information and credentials. Or alternately, you can simply export it as a config template file and then import it into your vManage. All right, so it looks like verification is successful. And this is exactly the step you mentioned where I can add additional information like system IP. So I'll just enter test values mm -hmm. and the site ID for SD-WAN, like a branch ID. I will need my vBond uh, 
and or name like Cisco TME lab, what I was using. Right. Now, one other thing before you click on next to keep in mind is at the top, what you see is the option to choose your tunnel interfaces. Remember in the SD-WAN world, your tunnel interfaces are akin to your WAN interfaces. So if on this device, your WAN interface is just the one, which is Gigabit Ethernet 001, you can leave it at that. But if you happen to have two or more WAN interfaces, make sure you tick these boxes here so that the config tool can make the appropriate modifications for you. Understood. All right, so let's click next and do the modification with custom parameters mm -hmm. I just mentioned and then convert the file to SD-WAN. That's actually the step where we will be creating SD-WAN config for my ISR4K. That's right, yeah. What the tool will do is will it'll actually create individual feature templates for you uh, that you can now add directly into vManage. Okay, so now I got you. Here I can select my vManage IP, configure the right port number and credentials, and of course the device type, which is in my case uh, ISR uh, 4331, and then it will do API call directly to vManage and create templates for me. Is it right? That's exactly right. Understood. And last but not least, of course, I can download the result to my local computer as well. Yep, you can always download the file locally and upload the templates into your vManage in the event that your vManage is not accessible from this tool. Understood, thank you. So we do have basic definition of the router in PNP portal, and we do have SDVAN configuration. We just converted from the previous existing iOS configuration. So now the question to you, Hamza, is what do I need on vManage to prepare this ISR4K to define this ISR4K on vManage side. Right, so at this point, Nikolai, what we'll be doing is uh, three things. First, we will essentially tell the vManage about your ISR4K. So we have a couple of ways of doing that, but typically what that involves is using a signed serial file from Cisco and uploading that into vManage. The next thing we will be doing is working with the templates. So we have gotten device templates because of the config migration tool and those should be available now on your vManage. So it just becomes, you know, the work of binding the config template to your particular ISR4K. So let's take a quick look at uh, the first step, right? How do I get the signed serial file onto my vManage? Okay. So uh, there are two ways of doing this. Uh, one is doing it the manual method. So on the PNP portal under controller profiles, uh, next to the name of your controller, right on the side, you should see a provisioning file. You can simply click and download that file. That file contains a list of all the devices that you have added on the PNP portal. Once that file is available, you can go over to your vManage. And under configuration, go over to devices. And here you'll see the option called upload vManage list. So if you simply click on that, browse and select the file. So that's one way of doing it. Or if you're, you know, if you just want to make things a little more seamless, uh, we have a new option on vManage 18.3. You should see a sync smart account. So if you simply click on that button and enter your smart account credentials over here, vManage will automatically talk to the PNP portal and pull the signed list file automatically into this uh, particular database over here. Understood. So basically we have two options. One is kind of manual way to do it via downloading the serial file list from PNP portal and then uploading this into vManage. And the second automated option will be just to sync out from vManage. That's right. Understood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So next step after serial file upload is to make sure that I do have device template for my ISR 4K. And then after the basic check, I will attach this device to the template. So let me show you what I did in vManage. Under configuration templates, I do have device template for ISR 4K. 
and uh, basically what I will do, I can modify, I can view it. It's just the same look and feel as I had for VH routers, VH cloud. It's just a different router type. That's right. And then uh, I don't want to modify any values right now. It all looks good to me. So what I want to do next is to a attach this ISR 4K to this device. Once your device boots up, because of DHCP, you will get an IP address and you will be able to undergo zero touch provisioning. You will talk to the PNP portal. You will learn about your vBond. Your vBond will tell you about your vManage and vSmart. And when your device contacts vSmart, because you have bound this configuration template for this particular device with the serial number and chassis number, the vManage will automatically push this configuration template onto your router and completely configure it A to Z. Now let's talk about software upload procedure. In my lab case, I do have in the lab console and DHCP running so my router will get IP address uh, via DHCP, default gateway, DNS, it's all good but what if the WAN IP is static and uh, what if I don't have all this DHCP uh, infrastructure which I will be using in my lab tell me how, the, how can I install SD-WAN image in this static IP case. All right, so if you do have DHCP, uh, you can simply do a remote login via Telnet or SSH into the router. Typically, you'd use SSH uh, to you know, kickstart the upload process. But that said, if you have a static IP, uh, two things. One, uh, you won't be able to use plug and play. Uh, so that will involve a little more manual configuration. And second thing, because your IP address is static and uh, the way our image upgrade process works is we will be doing some erasing of configuration initially. We highly recommend that you have console or direct console access to your device. So in the event that you do have uh, the static IP, some of the configuration that you need to do uh, is available again on sdvan-docs.cisco.com. Uh, it has a complete guide of you know what you need to configure on the device manually uh, for the first time you provision the box. Understood, thank you. And I don't need this in my case because I'll be using PNP with the HTTP, so that will be zero touch for me. Yes, that will be true zero touch provision in your case, yes. All right, next question is about uh, space on the boot flash. Uh, I have to check that I have enough. What is enough for you? Uh, at least 1.5 GB, uh, that should be sufficient. Uh, and if you want to take a quick look at uh, that on your CLI, you can do a show boot flash and just do a pipe include for used and that will give you a quick snapshot of how many bytes you have available. Okay, so in this case it looks like I have 28, uh, which is more than enough for more, the upgrade. Yes, yes. And then last but not least, yes, I need to upload a Steven image, which is... Uh, quite obvious and I know how to do it. Uh, it's the same procedure as for every Cisco router, mm -hmm. nothing special on it. So I will be uploading this to the boot flash. I have to check config register and the boot variable as described on the step-by-step -step, uh, online documentation and that's it, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. The boot variable will help determine which image your router will boot with. So typically your boot variable will now point to the SD WAN image on your device. Do I need to delete old or existing images from the boot flash? What is the recommendation here? Uh, typically, you can keep your existing running config as well as your existing iOS XE config in the boot flash, maybe in a separate folder, uh, just for backup purposes, or you can keep it somewhere you know, off your router for backup purposes. Uh, but for us, as long as you have one and a half gigs worth of storage on your boot flash, you should be good to go. Understood, thank you. Now we are almost there, we need to reboot the router and it looks like I see here two reboots. Why do we need two? Could you elaborate on that, Hamza? Sure, Nikolai. So the first reboot is just standard Cisco software upgrade procedure. You use point to a new boot variable, the device has to be rebooted so that the new image is installed on the device. However, what we've done here is once the device boots up with the SD-WAN image, 
as part of the initial procedure, you will be issuing a command that will help clear any stale existing configuration from the device. So it's kind of like starting with a blank slate. So as part of that uh, command, it will automatically induce a second reload. So you don't have to manually do this. It should automatically be taken care of. And once that second reboot is done, now it will be considered that your device has been completely loaded with the sd one image. So the PNP phase will start after second reboot or yes. after first? The, the PNP process is something that will get kickstarted automatically, assuming you have DHCP and uh, etc. So what we typically do is make sure that the PNP takes place after you have cleared internal iOS XE configuration from or internal iOS XE information from your router. So typically you would want PNP to occur successfully after the second automatic reload. Okay, I see. So basically there's a special CLI to stop PNP, which I can use after first reboot? That's right, yeah. You, are, you will have a CLI that will help you stop PNP. You'll have another CLI that will help you clear any remnant or stale information from the device. And the same CLI will automatically induce the second reload. Right. I saw it clear written on the online documentation, so that's straightforward. Uh, so what I did, let me show you on um, CLI. I already did the first reboot. Now I am going to execute request platform software as event software reset, and that that will trigger my second reboot, right? That's right. Okay, so let's keep going and uh, do this. And it will take some time for the router to reset the full internal information and then to reboot. Um, and we'll come back later on and see what is exactly uh, happened after reboot. That's right, yeah. And specifically in our case over here, uh, we have connected the router to the router's console port. So we should get a glimpse into all the you know steps and procedures that the device is undergoing as this image gets installed on it. Right, so we will record all the console logs and check it later on if needed. That's right. Last very important step is verification of the whole software update procedure. Let's start with Consola first, and then we will check PNP portal as well, and finally have a look at vManage. Mm -hmm. So um, let me jump to Consola logs, and what do you see here is system configuration dialog, meaning my router came up with empty default configuration, and uh, if I scroll down, then you will see uh, that PNP phase started. So we go to devicehelpercisco.com, which is that IP address. In our case, it's a staging server. And uh, we start PNP discovery phase. We successfully did the redirection, means we got all information for vBond, organization name, from PNP, and then went to the bond. That's right, yeah. So you would typically start with a blank slate. Uh, because you're getting an IP via DHCP, your device has undergone the PNP process. It has discovered its vBond. So now, even though you don't have any configuration, the ZTP or the plug and play process will help provision this device completely from a configuration perspective. PNP verification is straightforward. I'm on the same screen as before for device configuration and what I see now redirect was successful I had it yellow awaiting redirection now it's green because I did my redirection and then I can check the logs and see detailed steps what was done during this redire redirection phase and last verification step will be on vManage so in this device dashboard, I see the list of devices, routers, which are online. And the last one, this is my ISR 4K. If I go to device dashboard, it will tell me the device is up and running. Uh, it uh, has control connections up. So I have the same look and feel yep. as for my other routers. So in this case, we're looking at um, connections and is connected to two vSmarts because I'm using redundant vSmart configuration and it all looks good. Yep. So what did you think overall? 
pretty easy, right? Exactly. So basically, uh, we did the whole upgrade, and I think once you did all this preparation steps, like verification of the uh, software, hardware, ROM on, um, which will take you probably 15 minutes for preparation, and then additional 15 minutes just to wait for the router to come back after reboot. That's it. Yep, that's pretty much it. Great. Thanks a lot. And I think this is the end of our presentation where we demonstrated how to upgrade an existing iOS XE router, in our case, ISR 4K to SD-WAN image. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone.